Merry Christmas everybody. I'm here to tell you a little story about Santa and how he delivers all the presents around the world to all the children who have been nice that year. Or indeed how he doesn't because it's impossible and he doesn't actually exist. There are 1.9 billion children in the world. There are in fact 3.5 children per household. 542,857,142.9 households to visit on Christmas. That is a lot. Now, of course, Santa is clever and efficient. He doesn't have to visit all 542,857,142.9 households. In fact, you know, that's a bit of a silly number as well. We probably need to round this just to make it simpler. So for simplicity's sake, we'll round it to 542,857,142 households. Out of those 542,857,142 households, actually he doesn't visit all of them, of course, because Santa is a racist and he does not visit Muslim children or Buddhist children or any of the other religions in the world, apart from, of course, the ones who celebrate Christmas. That is Christian children. Now, only 32% of the world's population is Christian. And of those, if Santa is a statistician, he will take an average of the naughtiness and niceness ratio between those children, and he will deliver to the upper half of those. So that means that 50% of these children are naughty, reducing his work by a third of 50%. Now that still leaves Santa with 86,857,142 households to visit on Christmas. So, Santa has to deliver presents to these 86,857,142 households in one night. Now, how long does he actually have to do that? Thankfully, because of the world, the international date line is here. And this is where Christmas starts at midnight on December the 24th. Now, as it takes the world to turn, 24 hours, there must be 24 hours at least of Christmas in which he can do his deliveries. But if we assume Santa doesn't just deliver at midnight everywhere, he delivers between 12 and 7, then he actually has 31 hours of Christmas with which to work and which to deliver presents. Now that works out to 2,801,843 houses per hour. 446,697 houses per minute, and in fact that is at 778 houses per second. Now, here comes the real science. The area of Europe, which we are taking as an indicator of how far Santa has to go, is 10,180,000 kilometers squared. In that area, there are 151 million households. Now, that gives an average of 15 households per kilometer squared. The optimum arrangement for 15 households per kilometre square is this arrangement here, where we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, in a pattern that repeats per kilometre square. Now that is the best estimate for how far between households there is. If you do the maths, maths teachers, you will find that this is 0.23 kilometres between households as an average distance. That means if Santa travels for 778 houses per second, he has to travel a distance of 183 kilometers every second. In other words, this is a speed of 411,750 miles per hour. Now, if Santa was traveling at 183 kilometers per second through the Earth's atmosphere, the drag force purely from air resistance on him is equal to one half times the density of air times the velocity squared times the cross-sectional area of the sleigh times the drag coefficient of the sleigh. I've assumed a number of things here. The drag coefficient of the sleigh is very low. I've assumed that the area of the sleigh is one meter squared. I've assumed that the velocity is 183 kilometers per second and that the density of air is 1.27 kilograms per meters cubed. This results in a force needed to propel Santa through the atmosphere at this velocity of 956,948,175 newtons, or approximately equal to 141 Saturn V rockets that propelled man towards the moon. Not only this, but the energy required to propel Santa through the atmosphere, and therefore the energy also given to him and the sleigh as they travel through the atmosphere is equal to the force times the distance travelled. The force and the distance 
in one second travel are 956,148,175 newtons times 183,000 meters is 1.75 times 10 to the power of 14 joules or 175 trillion joules of energy per second. That is equivalent to boiling 636 million kettles in one second. This transfer of energy would result in an increase in Santa's temperature of 208 million degrees Celsius. In other words, he would be roughly 15 times hotter than the centre of the sun. Santa is 70% water, so is reindeer. The sleigh is made of wood. Within a microsecond of taking off, he would be vaporised into a plasma of quarks, gluons, protons and neutrons. If Santa ever did exist, he's dead now. Merry Christmas. Santa Claus is coming.